I've clicked onto the Global Tropical Arrive for March 26th, 2024. As is always the case in these videos, the flood expressure are mine alone, and in making decisions ahead of any tropical cyclones, look to your local weather office, local emergency management, and local tropical cyclone warning center. So we have one system active across the tropics today, and I'm hoping the satellite imagery will load. And it doesn't appear it is going to. I think I need to switch the satellite imagery. Just give me a moment, as the system did just change designations from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center, so things are a bit mixed on here, and I'm going to have to reset everything. But the system is, is Tropical Depression 9 here off the coastline of Madagascar, and you can see it's spinning away here just offshore, and this system is uh, looking to be a significant threat to Madagascar, Mauritius, and La Reunion uh, over the coming days, and we're looking at potential for significant wind impacts, storm surge impacts, and rainfall as the system does come south. Now, we've got a packed video today, so I'm going to be splitting this into three segments. I'm going to be talking about first how the system is developing right now, what current trends I'm seeing on satellite, and then we'll go into impacts for Madagascar, and then after that, we'll go into potential impacts for Mauritius and La Reunion as we get into the latter half of this week and into this weekend. So immediately getting into the analysis side, you can see that the system is very healthy on satellite immediately. We've got a lot of organized and deep convection sustaining and wrapping in a cyclonic or clockwise manner in the center of circulation. And this is also helped by little feeder bands here that you can see on the northwestern and northeastern side of this low. And these feeder bands are a classic sign of a developing tropical storm, and these are a key feature. You might have seen a diagram sort of like this before in, say, a textbook or on TV or something. This is a, this is a, a classic look of a, a favorable environment for a tropical cyclone, and we've got this in place right now, and I can show you this in real time with our storm. You can see that usually in tropical cyclones, you have winds going right towards the center and the low levels that eventually rise as thunderstorms in the center, and then they diverge away from the storm center aloft. And I can show you this in real time with these feeder bands bringing in tropical moisture directly into the center. You can also see this in a microwave pass that we got uh, just now, just, just came out as I'm recording this video. And you can see these bands wrapping directly into the center of the circulation. Now, as they converge here into the center of the storm, they rise up as thunderstorms. And then aloft, they, if the environment allows it to, expand away from the storm, and we have that here. You can see that we have this large upper high draped right over our storm. This is allowing the storm to breathe, if you will, and it's allowing all that wind from the thunderstorms to diverge away. They're not kept here in the uh, near the center. They're, allowing, they're allowed to uh, move away from the storm at a fairly quick pace as well, and that's a very favorable look for our storm. Now, unfortunately, this is not a welcome look if the storm is right next to land, as this is a volatile setup for potential intensification, perhaps of a significant degree. If I go back to that microwave pass, you can see that there may be a sign that these bands are trying to converge into maybe an eye wall developing here on the, in the center of the storm. Now, I'd hold off right now on calling this an eye. I'd like to see how this would develop over the next coming hours. But as of right now, this looks like a pretty menacing look for the storm. And if it is an eye, it makes sense just given the upper level environment that it's being so favorable. Now, in terms of impacts to Madagascar, right now the storm, like I'm showing you, is likely intensifying. And right now I'd say it's likely a tropical storm. It's right now still a tropical depression by Mateo France, but that could change at any time. They could name it at any time. It could be a named storm by the time this video comes out. And really... What we're going to have to watch for is how strong does the storm get as we have some competing steering flip flows in place. If you look at the 150 millibar plot here from the European, this is closer to the surface, and you can see that we have this large ridge draped south of Madagascar, and this is trying to pull the storm towards the southwest. And this is trying to pull it right into Madagascar. And if this was the dominant steering uh, pattern, we would get the storm coming right over northern Madagascar. But aloft, we have a completely different one. We've got this upper trough trying to pull the storm off towards the south and east, towards Mauritius and La Reunion. So if you look at this, we've got competing flows of west to east. Those flows are going to cancel out, but we do have a mean flow of 
south. And that's where the storm is going to be tracking over the coming days. And really, we're going to have to watch exactly how strong this storm gets. If it remains weaker, it's likely going to feel more of the flow from this ridge. And I can show you this in a sounding from the GFS. If it's weaker, imagine it's kept to, say, this level of the atmosphere. It's going to likely be carried more into Madagascar. But if it's stronger, say it extends way up here, it's got more flow trying to push it away from the coastline. And that is going to allow the storm to stay offshore just barely. Now, importantly, this does not mean that you're going to get away from impacts. Unfortunately, impacts are going to happen regardless. In fact, they're happening right now. You can see we have some banding thunderstorms directly over the landmass, and this could easily lead to some flooding issues, especially with some of the higher terrain of Madagascar. But alongside that, right now, the consensus is that this storm center will get very close to the coastline, and we could be looking at storm surge impacts for this part of the coastline and strong winds especially if the storm does build that eye, an eye wall, and we get some intensification of the storm as it tracks towards the south uh, and west. Now, here's the current rainfall, not rainfall forecast, but this is the current track forecast, rather, from the GFS Ensemble. This is an ensemble of about 31 members. So this is showing you some different solutions of what could happen with the storm. And you can see, like I talked about, the main solution here being just offshore. Madagascar is right about there. And it's just offshore, and you could still get very significant impacts there. Now, notably, note that if the storm does get stronger earlier, the storm does curve away from Madagascar quicker. And this does become important for the track later down the line for Mateo, not Mateo, France, La Reunion and Mauritius. And I'll talk about that more in the next section of this video. But for Madagascar, right now we're looking at significant impacts mainly being rainfall from the storm. This is the GFS forecast rainfall uh, over the next five days and you can see as the storm tracks just offshore this is from the gfs so it takes a track something like this you can see very significant rainfall along the coastline here potentially in excess of 200 millimeters in some local spots it's possible that it exceeds 300 millimeters and uh, i know this doesn't look very heavy over portions of more inland madagascar but keep in mind it's happening right now we're getting rainfall over this portion and the GFS may be underdoing some of the rainfall in the outer bands over this part of uh, Madagascar. So you could be looking at significant rainfall across this entire region. And it's important that you stay tuned to Mateo Madagascar for the latest updates uh, on potential rainfall there. But we could also be looking at, again, increased wind impacts if the storm does come closer. You can see the track range here from Mateo Madagascar. I'll quickly reload this to make sure we don't have any new information uh, but you can see the uncertainty here in this uh, hatch region of the uncertainty in track. That is showing where the track, where the storm could track overall. And you can see still having a possibility of the storm here coming into Madagascar. But notably, like I talked about, even if the storm stays offshore, you could still get significant impacts. And that's shown here. We have uh, some alerts here, green cyclone alerts in place for northeastern Madagascar. And again, stay tuned to Mateo Madagascar for the latest information local to you ahead of the storm. And I'll leave a link to their website in the description so you can go ahead and see what their latest information is. Now, into the section for La Reunion and Mauritius. The track here is very sensitive and it's highly dependent on what happens in the next couple of days here with Madagascar. Uh, I'll quickly just review what I went over for Madagascar. Right now, we have a very weak steering flow. We have a ridge down in the low levels trying to push it towards Madagascar. And a lot we have an upper trough trying to push it towards La Reunion and Mauritius. The net flow of this is pretty weak, and it's trying to steer the storm right now just south. And the key aspect over the next couple of days is with how close does the storm get to Madagascar? Does it come ashore? Does it stay offshore? And right now, that's a bit uncertain. And right now, either way, you could be looking at significant changes to the forecast track if either scenario occurs. As of right now, the consensus is, and I'll show you this in the GFS ensemble track, that the system is likely to stay just offshore of Madagascar. And I'd be more inclined to agree with this scenario, just given what we're seeing in current uh, trends of the storm. It is looking to be intensifying actively as we speak. So we'll likely get a stronger storm, I'd say, uh, just based on current trends. And you can see stronger storms are likely, uh, the stronger, excuse me, the stronger the storm, the more likely it turns towards the southeast quicker. 
Now, unfortunately, because of the storm likely to turn southeast, that means we avoid land interaction with Madagascar. If the storm were to go ashore of Madagascar and interact with a landmass quite a bit, we would be looking at the storm likely weakening quite a bit, and that could limit how strong the storm is as it comes southeast. And you can see that in some of the weaker members on the GFS Ensemble. You've got some of these weaker members that tracked over Madagascar. They're not nearly as strong as the northern bunch, which stayed offshore of Madagascar. And right now, with the current consensus keeping the storm offshore, we're looking at a significant potential of a strong storm coming southeast towards La Reunion and Mauritius. Now, exactly which island is it going to hit? Right now, I cannot get into that detailing. as This is, a, this is five days plus out. We're talking about a forecast five to six days in advance. And for such fine details of the exact center track, I can't get into that right now. But what I can tell you in Madagascar, or sorry, not again Madagascar, La Reunion and Mauritius, is that, like I said, this the odds are higher right now of a more significant storm coming our way of significant strength. And we could be looking at impacts of strong winds, heavy rainfall, and storm surge with the system as it does come southeast. And conditions may be favorable for the system as it does come south and east. This is a GFS model track. This is the deterministic run. And right now, this is taking the idea that the storm tracks offshore of Madagascar, does not interact with the landmass here. Now, importantly, we're going to be watching this upper level low that is helping to turn the storm towards the islands and this jet streak in between the storm and this upper low, as this is going to allow the system to fend off some of the incoming shear from an upper trough digging into Madagascar. You can see as we get towards the latter half of this weekend, so this is Friday evening local time, here's a storm just east of Madagascar coming towards Mauritius and La Reunion, and we have our upper trough now digging in to Madagascar. And this is providing a little bit of wind shear west of the storm, but note the strong winds that we have here ahead of the storm. And here's what's left of the upper low that's turned it towards the southeast. This is a favorable look for a jet streak that could potentially fend off or offset rather the impacts of this wind shear from this upper trough. And this could allow the system to maintain or intensify on the way south. You can see the GFS maintains a pressure of about 965 millibars. And that's a pretty strong storm on this forecast coming towards the islands. Now, some good news is there is some variability to this. The European, on the other hand, is much closer to uh, Madagascar on its track here. You can see it's just on the coastline on this run. And because of that, perhaps we get a little bit of weakening. Perhaps it is a little bit slower because of the competing flows from the ridge down south and the trough down south and different layers of the atmosphere. Maybe the storm is a bit uh, slower because of the storm being weaker with land interaction with Madagascar. And it allows the low to be a little bit faster and maybe allows this jet streak to be a little too fast for a storm and the shear takes it uh, over and allows the storm to weaken on approach to the islands. So there's a bit of variability here and I hope this sort of makes sense uh, for those in Mauritius and La Reunion. Uh, but right now I'd say the key messages for Mauritius and La Reunion if you want a summary of it all, is that our storm is likely to come south and east over the coming days. And I'll go to this graphic because it's a bit nicer and a bit more clear on the exact track uncertainty. But you can see that we have the potential for a significant storm here. Mateo France currently forecasts an intense tropical cyclone peak, weakening down to a cyclone as it comes south and east. Exact details on which island it's going to hit are unknown right now but both islands are at threat and significant threat at that and we could be looking at impacts of heavy rainfall storm surge and strong winds where the storm passes closest to right now the best thing to do is review your cyclone plan and have it ready just in case you need to enact it and stay tuned to Matteo france and with the Mauritius meteorological services for the best information local to you on how to prepare ahead of the storm i'll have more uploads over the course of this week as always, and uh, I'll keep you updated on how the storm is progressing. But right now, again, significant threat to Mauritius and La Reunion as we go into the latter half of this week and into this weekend. But of course, before that, we are also looking at significant impacts to Madagascar, and we could be looking at significant impacts there, including storm surge, 
heavy winds and heavy rainfall across the northern part of the island. And there, make sure you stay tuned to Mateo Madagascar for the best information on what you can do to stay safe ahead of the storm. That was a lot to talk about, and I apologize if it was a bit hard to understand. I will have more uploads over the course of this week, and uh, I'll keep all updated. And again, I'll leave links to Mateo Madagascar, Mateo France, and Emergency Meteorological Services in the description below so you can go ahead to their websites and get the list of information on the storm as it uh, intensifies and tracks your way. But that's all that I've got for now. Thanks for watching.